well, it's uh, 4.30 a.m. I've had 19 minutes of sleep and I do have a face like a disgruntled blobfish. But I'm happy and I'm excited because we're off to go and do some waterfall photography and I get to drive Amanda's smart new truck. Yeah, maybe it can be yours one day. Really? Maybe. Oh, I would look, look, oh, hang on. Text message. Who's this? Oh, Thomas Heaton. Don't forget to tell them about the launch party. I almost forgot. So Saturday, you know, we've, we've been doing this F4 project for months. I know we've been hyping it up and all that lot. But this weekend, it finally goes out. And on Saturday, we're having a Zoom launch party. So if you want to join us and find out what it's all about, you can find out on Saturday. There's a link in the description below. Right, should we, uh, should we head off? Yeah. Are you ready? I am. <laughs> oh, it's at least. Right. Careful backing out. Now in this video, we've got a lot to get through, so I'll skip the boring three hour driving montage and get straight to the trail hiking montage instead. Finally, the provincial parks are open again with a glorious morning of waterfall photography to look forward to. So I decided to choose a waterfall in the middle of nowhere, three hours from home with a distinct absence of human beings, which is just how I like it. In fact, I feel like I've been practicing for this social distancing thing my whole life. So after a sweaty uphill hike, we finally arrived at our glorious destination. Okay, so here I am again. Again at Cast Creek Falls and the last time I came here it was frozen completely frozen solid and there was a little bit of water coming down the center and it was it was spectacular there's a, a link to that video here but I, I've never been here in spring conditions so I don't want to just kind of rush in and try and find the same compositions I got before in fact they just won't work because those shots before were based around the ice formations. Well, those are gone now, but what I do have is way more water. I've never seen it like this. It's really nice to see this level of flow. And now I've got all of these cascades lower down on the river. So I'm gonna have to completely rethink all of those compositions that I got last February. I think it was a February before. So the best way to approach this, rather than rush in and try and take very, very quick comps, is to sit down, have a coffee, eat a massive beef sandwich, maybe a bit of chocolate, and just study the scene from a nice rock, take my time, and the compositions should reveal themselves. Well, I tried to get comfy, but no matter what I tried, that river rock was not kind to my bum cherries. So I thought, sod it, it's time for a beef sandwich. Gluten-free for Amanda, of course, so I wasn't too worried about having to share. I did notice, however, that she kept looking longingly at my sandwich. Maybe she's just faking being a glutard. Yeah, I knew it. I guess I'll just enjoy my orange then, seeing as you scoffed me sarnie. Well, I've already found quite a few juicelicious compositions, and I think this spot where I am right now is the place to be. Because what I love is how the river is bookended by these beautiful cedar trees, these root systems. I always love that. Whenever I photograph waterfalls, it's not necessarily the waterfall itself that is most interesting to me. It's, it's the things around it, whether it's trees or rock formations or root systems, whatever it is, it's usually the things that surround the waterfall that make it the most beautiful. Maybe you actually squirted on it. <laughs> so one of the things that I like to do when I'm photographing waterfalls is I hardly ever get it all in one exposure. Usually it's a mixture of different exposures. So, for example, you see the top of the waterfall there, the, the big sort of uh, funnel that comes down. I always want that at a much longer shutter speed than I would have, let's say, these small areas of water here that are just kind of bubbling over the rocks there. So with these types of areas of a waterfall, these small drops, I prefer one sixth of a second or one quarter of a second because you get more texture and you get more motion you get more detail i don't really want that to be a mushy white blur but 
the big funnel at the top, it's so far away and it's just, it's just a column of white. So there really isn't much texture to be had from that particular part of the waterfall. So I always prefer that to be about a half a second, even a, even a second, whatever it takes to make it just this smooth, long tube. Uh, and then I'll blend that much smoother, longer exposure with these much faster exposures. So you've got that perfect blend of smooth, mushy white columns with the, and then you blend it with these lovely textured falls. The only time that I don't want a big column to be mushy is if it's absolutely ginormous. I feel like giant waterfalls, it's pointless to do a super long exposure on those. I, I like to see those. They're almost like clouds. You can actually see that that river is falling through the air and you get a lot of texture. But for small ones like this, I want that part of the column to be smooth and these areas to be nice and textured. I love that these cedar trees, they're, they're embracing these rocks. They're holding on for dear life. And who knows how long they'll last, maybe hundreds of years, maybe, the, maybe that is 200 years old, I, I really don't know, but I, I just love that element. It's so much more interesting than just having, you know, a white river. It's the, like I said, it's the things around the river that make it spectacular. And so I've got these root systems, these beautiful trees leaning in from the sides, and then I've got these mossy cliffs in the distance that you can see just either side of the main column. And that, to me, is everything that I would want in a, a Vancouver Island waterfall photograph. Now, I, I can't teach you all this and not plug my course, so if you want to know a little bit more, a bit more fine detail about how I get these shots, check out my online photography course, How to Photograph Waterfalls. So I think I'm finished with this composition. I'll go further up the river now and try and get some different comps. And then once I've worked that, I'll probably come back down to here and then get Tatey's Deep in the water and try some real close shots of these cascades coming over these boulders. Well, it wasn't a bad shot, but the first shot of the day is rarely the best. I knew I had to try harder. I felt that with a bit of effort and a critical eye, I could definitely do better. If you want to be a better photographer with a higher standard of work, your first step is to embrace the concept of trying harder and asking yourself, what can I do better? With that in mind, I went on the hunt to learn what I could about the many shapes and forms of this beautiful river. So I felt that that first composition, it was a bit obvious. It was a bit of a, you rock up and take the obvious shot. So now I'm working a bit harder to try and get something a bit more original. And I'm in the middle of the river. And the reason why I'm here is because I'm drawn by these, these roots that you can see in the side of the frame here, in this part of the shot. And that's, that's really what leads the eye so you can see it comes in from the left and leads the eye in towards the waterfall. That's what really interests me. And like I said before, with this part of the waterfall, I've used like a half a second shutter speed because I want that smooth motion. But in this part of the waterfall, I'm using between a quarter of a second and one sixth of a second because I just love that texture and that detail. The problem that I'm having is the, the, the main cascade of the waterfall is kind of an optical illusion. It, it, it doesn't quite look level because it's, it's coming at an angle, so it's kind of, it kind of curves inwards like that. So even though the camera's telling me it's perfectly level, it does look a bit weird. Now I've tried a few different compositions. So one of the first ones that I tried was to have the waterfall pushed over to the right there like that and have this root system in the left of the frame. But that optical illusion of the waterfall not being straight was even worse when I did that. So I did get those shots, but I'm not entirely sure that they worked out. And this is my process. I interact with the scene while constantly thinking, how can I make this shot better? So critical thinking isn't about telling yourself you're not good enough, it's simply the act of analysing the facts of what you see 
to form a judgment that should guide you towards improvement. And it's a very enjoyable process, especially when done in a beautiful place like this. So after a couple of hours of study and trying harder, I finally found a composition that I was happy with. Okay, so it's my firm belief that if you want the best shots, you have to suffer a little bit of discomfort, sometimes a lot of discomfort, and especially with waterfalls, is you want to be in the river. I don't like wearing those big welly boots because there comes a point with welly boots where you have to go a little bit deeper and then the water goes down over the top of the welly boots and now you've got wet feet and heavy, heavy welly boots that you have to hike out of the forest. So I just, I just wade in and get my feet wet with my hiking boots and I just accept that I'm going to get my feet wet. But the funny thing is, once you've been in a few minutes, that water that's inside your boots actually warms up a little bit and it's quite comfy. So what I've got going on here with this shot is, I'm recording a bit of video on here so I can show you this idea. I've actually framed up a panorama. So this is what I've got in the left of the frame. You can see these beautiful roots. There's the waterfall and I love this tree over here. Now all of this stuff that you see in this bottom, I would say bottom third of the image, I'm just gonna cut that out. So the panorama will start from about here and then it'll work its way around over to here. So you've got this lovely rock, cool cast topography. So that's why it's called Cast Creek, because of this type of rock that you can see here. That is cast topography. I've talked about that before in other videos. But what I want is that in the shot, bookending this lovely river with these spectacular roots. So I'll do one more sweep to give you an idea. So the pano goes across there like that and I'll probably just cut out the bottom the bottom third of the frame but we'll see maybe when I stitch it all together it'll actually work but it's going to be a bit of a bugger to put together because I have to focus stack each frame and I have to bracket each frame with different shutter speeds so that I've got that different texture in the water like I talked before so what I'll have to do is stitch together probably four images which have already been exposure blended and focus stacked so it will be a very miserable experience but the end result would be something hopefully quite special but it's something that you could never hope to capture with one single frame or without even doing a panel so I'll, I'll try and take the shot and if it turns out any good I'll show it to you I right, really better turn out good now Well, I was absolutely delighted with how this turned out, and I hope you like it too. There was a time when I first started out with photography that I would never have dreamed that I could one day capture images like this. And I think the single most important factor in my improvement was that willingness to try harder and not settle for the easy shots and ask myself, what could I do better? And that is something that you can do with your own landscape photography the very next time that you go out to shoot. All right, well, that was a brilliant morning shoot. I'm, I'm quite happy with what I got there. I think it was definitely worth getting up at stupid o'clock, but I've got to admit, oh, you're just freezing, aren't you? Hey, you're just cold. I was the one stood in the river. Yeah, you're not meant for this, this freezing cold stuff, are you? Degrees. Yeah, but I've really got to get back to the office because the F4 boys are nagging me to do my share of the editing. I, I think I've done more editing than all of them put together, to be quite honest. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you would, and post a comment, and uh, see you on the next one. Sure. Will we go now? Yes. Do you want to drive your truck back home? No. No, I get to drive it. All right, let's go.